Welcome to Excel Business Statistical Analysis video number 12. Hey, in this video, we're still talking about measures of location. But in this video, we want to talk about percentile and quartile. Now, last three videos, we concentrated on finding the location of the center of the data set. So when we calculated the median, that would be the one in the middle of a sorted list where about 50% are above and 50% are below. But we don't want to be limited to just finding 50% above and 50% below. So if we have percentile 75%, we'll have to calculate the actual marker. So in this case, a score of 84.5 marks the point at which approximately 75% of the values are below and 25% of the values are above. And we'll see the quartile is just a different way of doing percentile. And the calculation is limited to inside the data set, the 25%, 50, and 75% marker. But with a quartile, we'll call them the first, second, and third quartile markers. For example, percentile 75% gives us 84.5, but quartile 3 gives us exactly the same number. In both cases, we'll get the marker that divides the data set about 75% below, 25% above. Now we're on the sheet percentile quartile, and we have the same data set. And here's your name. You got a score of 85. And this is your interview exam score. And the job application says above 75% gets an interview. So we want to calculate and see what the actual marker in this data set is, and then see if your score is above it. Now, the first thing we need to do is count. I'm going to use the rows function. We know that we can use rows. Or in this case, since these are numbers, you could use the count function. But that just counts the number of rows, so 21 scores. Now, in this case, we have a practical example. So when we calculate the 75th percentile marker, it'll tell us the min score to get an interview. Now, before we look at the actual algorithm for how to calculate the marker in a sorted data set that represents the 75th percentile, I want to just look at the two built-in Excel functions for percentile. Now, from the drop-down list, you can see there's a .exc. That stands for exclusive. And exclusive will exclude the ability to put 0 or 100% percentile. If we choose .inc, it has a slightly different algorithm, but it allows you to put a 0 or 100% percentile in. 0 represents the min value in the data set. And 100% represents the max value in the data set. Now, the .exe version is the one we'll look at first. This is the one that the textbook uses. Actually, for this class, you can use either one, tab. The arguments for both versions of percentile functions are the same. The array, that's where you put all the values, comma. And then from that list of values, which, by the way, does not have to be sorted for the percentile function. You have to put the k, which is some number greater than 0% but less than 100%. And so when I close parentheses and hit Enter, now we have our marker, 84.5. And that value is right in between the 84 and the 85. But that value divides the data set about 75% below, 25% above. And now we have the answer to the original question, yes, you get an interview because your score is above the marker for the 75th percentile. Now, if instead of using .exc, we use the INC inclusive one, same argument, so we highlight all the values, comma, 75%. And when I hit Enter, I get a slightly different answer. Now, on large data sets, these two functions usually get the same answer. But if not, they're fairly close. In addition, both of these values are approximations for 75%. Because if we take 84.5 and count how many values are above that, in this data set, there's 16. And when you take 16 divided by 21, that's about 76%. So these calculations in these functions and the algorithms that we'll see in a moment 
are approximations. Now the difference is .exe doesn't allow a 0, so watch what happens when I put a 0 here. We get a num error here, but conveniently .inc delivers the min value. And if I put 100%, I still get a num with .exc, but .inc delivers at 100% the max value. Let's change this back to 75%. Now let's look at the difference between the algorithm for .exc and .inc. To do that, let's first select column I and select all the way to column N. And let's hide these columns. Right click, hide. Later, we can come back and unhide. Now the algorithm for the exclusive function uses the positional formula, the percentage times the count plus 1. So down here, we say, hey, there's that 75% times, in parentheses, the count of 21 plus 1, close parentheses. And when I hit Enter, we have to count through the data set from the sorted smallest to biggest top down 16. And it's not the 84. It's the 16.5 value that we're after. Now, because it's not an actual position in the data set, we have to take the difference here, which is exactly 1, and then go halfway through 1, which gives us 0.5. And then we add that to the 16th value. Now I'm going to make a little formula here using the integer function, because I want to take just the integer part of that position. That'll give me 16. And then at the front, after the equal sign, I want to take the full amount and subtract the integer part. That'll give me just the decimal. So if I were to change this to 62%, then it automatically says, hey, from the 13th position right here, 72, the interval is 4, 76 to 72. But somehow I need to go 64% of the way through that interval. Now I'm going to Control Z. Here we're going halfway through the interval. So to calculate the actual percentile marker, I take 16th position plus some extra little bit. Well, the full distance from 16 to 17. This is 17th position 85 minus the 16th position 84. And then times that 0.5. And that's how it calculates the percentile marker. For .inc, there's the algorithm for position the full 75% times the full count. And then we add an extra little bit. So plus, in parentheses, 1 minus the percentage. And notice what happens here mathematically. If I put a 0 in there, then 1 minus 0 is 1. So we get whatever that position is plus 1. If it's 100%, then 1 minus 100% is 0, and nothing is added. In this case, for 75th percentile on this data set, well, I get the wrong number formatting. Click in the cell, go back up to the number group, and apply your general, which is your eraser. Or you can use the keyboard, Control, Shift, Grave Accent, or Tilde. So the position is 16. That means we don't have any distance to go through. Actually, we could use the same exact formula up here because it's looking at a relative cell reference. So if I paste this here, it's calculating 0. And that means from the 16th position, we don't have to move at all. So I'm just going to get that 84. And so those are the two algorithms for how these two functions .exe and .inc work. Now, you can use either one of these. That's the one the textbook uses. I like to use this because it'll calculate the min and the max, which, as we'll see later, has a big advantage. Now, what's the 50% marker? From video number 9, you know we can just use the median function. Highlight all the values, and when I hit Enter, I get 68. Now, I want to unhide these. So watch this. We select H to O, and then right click, unhide. Because I have some helper cells over here. And I just want to show you that if we use percentile exclusive on this whole data set, well, when I say 50%, it's going to give me exactly the median. 
And when I do the inclusive comma at a 50% percentile and hit Enter, I'm going to get exactly the same thing. And we haven't done or tried a quartile yet, but the quartile function is exactly the same as percentile. It's got some array of numbers, comma. And notice it's polite. It has a drop down. And remind you, 1, 2, 3 is 25, 50, and 75th percentile. Now I have this over here, so I'm going to click on that. And this will give us the median just the same. If we do the inclusive, comma, and a 2 for median, there you have your five different formulas all calculating the same median, which really is percentile 50% and which divides the data set 50% below and 50% above. Now, with all of these calculations, we started with the percentile and calculated the marker. But if you want to do the reverse, you got a score of 90, and you want to know what is the percentile for your score? What is the percentage number of scores below you? Well, in that case, we can use the percentile rank function. There's the same .exe and .inc. I'm going to use .inc. There's the array. That's all the values, comma. And the x value, that's the marker, in our case, 90. Now, we could put significance in, like 1 to please show only one decimal, 2 to show only two decimals. But I want to leave the default. I want to see the decimal, so I'm going to close parentheses and Enter. And there we go. Approximately 87.5% of the scores are below you and 12.5% above. Now, you might also want to rank. So if you got a score of 85 in this data set, if we rank it smallest to biggest, well, we can just look here and see it's 17. Biggest to smallest, it looks like a rank of 5. So we can equals, and there are two different types of rank functions. Rank.average means that if there's a tie, a tie for first and second, it would add up 1 and 2, divide by 2, and get a rank of 1.5. Equivalent means if there's a tie for first and second, both would get first. I'm going to use the average one. The number, that's this particular number. So number is the individual number you want to rank. Reference, those are all the values. You're going to rank that particular number in the first argument against those. And then comma. For order, put 0 for descending and 1 for ascending. We'll put 0. So that means the biggest will get first place. Close parentheses and Enter. So there's a rank of 5. Now we want to scroll down, and we have a data set. And if I click in cell B61, Control down arrow, it looks like we have a data set with 490 rows of CPA score data. Control up arrow. Now from this CPA data, we want to calculate something called a five number summary. And we do that by calculating the min, the max, and quartile 1, 2, and 3. This helps to show the spread in the data. Now we are going to start with quartile. We'll see how to do it with quartile and then percentile. If you use .exe because you want that algorithm, you cannot use that function for min or max. You'll have to use a separate function for min and max, and then use .exe on quartile 1 to 3. But if you use .inc, tab, then in the array argument, let's click in the top cell, use Control Shift down arrow to highlight all the way to the bottom, Control Backspace to jump back to the active cell, and then comma. In quartile, because we use INC inclusive, it's polite. It shows 0 to 4. Now, if we did this the old school way, which in this case, I wouldn't do it this way. We'd have to lock that range, put it in an individual cell, Control Enter, copy it down, go to the last cell, hit F2, and verify. Rather than do it the old school way, let's do it the new school way with a dynamic spilled array formula. There it is. All we need to do is put in 0 to 4 down across the rows into quartile. And the quartile function will know to calculate each one of those values and spill them down the column. So when I hit Enter, just like that, 
I get the min, the max, quartile 1, 2, and 3. Now, this is a dynamic spilled array formula. So all the formulas below the top cell are grayed out. The formula lives in just the top cell. Now, what this tells us about the CPA data scores is, well, that's the min value. Here's the max value. And by the way, it's really hard to get 100 points on the CPA exam. But when we look at a score of 43, that means about 25% of the scores were below, 75% above. There's the median and a score of 76. That means 75% of the other scores were below that. Now we can do this with percentile dot inc. Click in the top cell, control shift down arrow, control backspace, comma. And the k argument requires our percentile percentage. And this argument is not as polite as quartile, but of course, it's totally flexible. We can put whatever percentages we want in here. And since we want our five number summary, we put in a 0, 25, 50, 75, and a 1. Now when I hit Enter, the results spill. And of course, with either function, because we're using the dot .inc, we get exactly the same results. Now let's scroll down and look at our last example. Here's a table of quarterly sales data. And for the current quarter, quarter 1, 2022, that's the sales amount. And we want to see if the current sales amount is greater than the 90th percentile marker. Now to count the number of quarterly sales data points we have, we can use the rows function. And this is an Excel table, so we don't have to manually click and drag or use a keyboard. To highlight the full sales column, we hover our cursor above the field name. And when we see that downward black pointing arrow, we click. It puts in the table name and in square brackets, the field name. When I hit Enter, I have 41 records in that table. For percentile, we'll use .inc. In the array argument, we'll put the full sales column by clicking above the field name, comma, and the k will be this 90th percentile. When I hit Enter, well, it looks like we didn't quite make it above the 90th percentile marker. But let's analyze our current number a little bit further. Let's see what the rank is. So we'll use rank.average. The number, here's the number that we want to rank, comma, against whatever's in the reference argument, so the whole column, comma. And we want the biggest to be first place. So we'll put a 0 for descending, close parentheses, and Enter. Well, that's not bad. That has a rank of 6th. Now, we know it's not above the 90th percentile, but let's figure out what the actual percentile percentage is. So we'll use percentile rank, and I'm going to use .inc. The array, well, that's the full sales column, comma. The x, that's the particular value that already is the marker. And when I hit Enter, now we know from that marker, about 87.5% of the other values are below and 12.5% above. All right, in this video, we talked a lot about percentiles and quartiles. We saw a great sales example. We saw a five number summary on CPA data. And we started it off by talking about the difference between percentile.exe and .inc and the algorithms for both. We talked about the quartile function, percentile rank, and the rank functions. All right, next video, we're going to have an exciting topic, variation, where we get to talk about standard deviation. All right, we'll see you next video.